takes four or five seconds for a bounce to float. Yes, some can all swim, but the kind of you. Crossing Borders 2, the second instalment of my travels across the continent. With a global pandemic in full swing and borders being closed faster than we could cross them, 2020 was about to unleash the most challenging adventures yet. It only takes four or five seconds for a bounce to float. Starting my journey in the usual fashion, it was time to prep and load the van with Precision Tetris OCD. <laughs> Got a toilet roll. Most importantly, this is like Christmas Home Video 2004. I don't know why I chose 2004 particularly, but you know. Let's do it! Crossing Borders 2, baby! Out the door! Getting a bit too excited and waking up the neighbours, our first stop was a large reservoir in central France. After a few hours of driving around the res, it was clear how busy the public lakes were during the pandemic. Eventually finding an area I could target for the night, we unloaded the van and set up for the night ahead. Good morning, and it is a good morning because just packed the van, fully loaded and ready to go. Um, things didn't turn out the way we wanted it to last night. Um, but nothing usually does in fishing. So it's been a bit of an effort, um, lots of packing and unpacking and repacking, but we're finally back in the van and we're ready to go and explore some new lakes. So not gonna hang about, straight on the road, off we go. Deciding to leave the reservoir after a barrage of very small carp all night, we spent the day exploring some of the other large reservoirs in this region. Stopping off in bays in the search for carp, scanning Google Maps for likely areas and access points. Oh, my hands up. It was late afternoon by the time we'd found a new lake and a new home for the night ahead. Making light work of unpacking again, it was straight back out to work. Finding the cart was paramount, and if they weren't here, you better believe we were on the move. Spending the next few days marooned on an island, I spent hours watching the water and searching out in the boat. Despite seeing fish on the echo, I had not converted my efforts into any car. dry spell was certainly not from a lack of effort and keeping proactive I continued to search for feeding areas out in the boat. With the first half of my session slowly slipping away it was time for one last move. This wasn't the start I had hoped for and despite all of my efforts it was time to admit defeat and enjoy the last incredible sunrise across this giant reservoir. The following morning we were due to meet Samir, Claire and Thibault for a night on the river. Big Carp City I hear. Big Carp City. Hello hey, brother. Hey. How you doing? Good to see you man. You good? I wasted no time getting a few rods out in the blistering heat. But with the conditions not looking promising and only one night at my disposal here, it was more of a hit and hope than anything else. It's not been the best of conditions though, to be fair, buddy. So it's been, been hot, hasn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't very beat yourself hot. up about it, mate. It's tough times at the moment. It's just one of them, isn't it? <laughs> Can't fish you, bro. More importantly, yeah. here's the beers. Oh, Stick them in the, the fridge, beer. lad. Lovely. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Samir's barbecue had gone down well, and catching up with the French team was a nice distraction from the lack of action over the last few days. Sometimes a few beers and good times with friends is all you need to lift the spirits. The following morning I missed a take just before sunrise. Being my first chance in a week, I was truly wounded. With the lads leaving early doors to continue their adventures, it was time for me to get a quick haircut before heading into the Alps for the second part of my adventure. Oi, oi. Bye, lads. Jamie, nice to meet you, buddy. Having dropped Steph off at the airport later that morning, I was due to meet up with some friends at a small park lake in the Alps. Trying to break my curse, I shipped out three rods at varying depths. Taking some advice, I opted for an all-out citrus approach and hoped the last few hours of the day would break my run of bad luck. Playing the first carp of my journey so far was a relief, and as she danced around in the margins before slipping into the net, the pressure was finally off. Yes! Oh! What a relief, man. Right, well, here we go. Number one after a five day struggle, um, and it's been a long time coming. <laughs> Just shows a couple of hours in the right place, uh, and we've banged one out straight away. This one coming on the citrus, and I had some white citrus in the back in the van. So, thank you very much. She went 33 pounds, and I'm a very, very happy man. <laughs> Brilliant. Receiving a call a short while after slipping that cart back, my buddy Fabian was having a red letter session on the opposite side of the lake. I was straight round with the cameras as he had landed some incredible specimens topped by this enormous 63 pound mirror. Congratulating Fabian on his captures, it was time to head back and try and get one more before the end of the day. Man, going to be off home in a little while, but we will be, uh, we will be back tomorrow with a vengeance for more of these bad boys. Whoa. <laughs> Bonjour, no? Um Yeah, day two of the uh, of the big part lake, big sexy alpine, massive monstrous mirrors and massive ridiculous beasts to be had on the bank. And uh, yeah, I've had about three hours sleep as per usual. Been up all night charging batteries and loading cards and generally just just being tired, which is the story of everything at the moment. With the lack of sleep starting to catch up with me, there was no time for snoozing and losing. Getting on the road just after 4 a.m., we wanted to have the rods out for first light. Good God, man. With my buddy Alex fishing to the left, we both decided to target the same area and it didn't take long for Alex to get the first run. Rewarded with his stunning mid-40 mirror, he just had time to slip her back before his left hand rod was away again. Yeah, it is. A bit common. Oh, jeez. Angry common. <laughs> same common. Hey. The rest of the morning passed without event and the fish slowly moved up the other end of the lake. We decided to head back early and return the following morning. Well, good, very good morning to you. Um, and you join me here at the other end of the lake. And uh, after yesterday's very slow, um, slow day on the rods, we've decided to have a bit of a uh, change of plan today and move right the way down the far end of the lake. Um, we left probably just after 3 a.m., about five, 5 past. Literally got out of bed, jumped straight in the van, got down here. We went up the total opposite end of the lake. This is what they call the old reserve, I believe. Um, which is part of the lake that was backfilled. Um, I'm not sure how long ago, but this morning already there's been loads of fish boshing out in this area. Um, somewhere I actually wanted to get in on the first day that we were here. Well, that I was here. Lads were already here when I, when I turned up on Thursday. Um, we're now on Saturday morning, so it's probably gonna be quite busy today. 
Um, I'm, I've switched over to the drop-off inlines. I was using the um, standard heavy-duty lead clips, uh, but I've gone over to that because we are fishing on quite a solid bottom out there and I'm dropping from the boat. Um, I always fish drop-offs from the boat uh, and I know that if I've got one of these monstrous fish that live in this lake on, that lead is going to come straight off, no questions asked. So without further ado, I'm going to stop waffling on. I'm going to get this rig out and hopefully today I'm going to have some very big carp to show you on the bank. The move had paid off. Following the fish up the lake had resulted in an early take. It might not have been the giants that we were after, but it was certainly a great start to the day. Getting the rod straight back out on the spot was paramount, and it wasn't long before it was away again. number two and I think it's going to be a busy day today you've seen a lot of fish show uh, this rod had been put back out for about five minutes I had a single beak and I said to uh, Alex um, that's gonna I think I thought that was away there that's gonna go and about 10 seconds later it absolutely belted off so lovely golden glow lovely job on to the next one It was a busy morning for me that morning. Landing a number of carp to around 30 pounds, the park started to fill up with public and tourists. Alex and I decided to meet up with some of the other lads and go and explore some of the incredible locations the Alps had to offer. A big tasty with bacon meal. Tired man, once again, 5 a.m. And uh, we're off to the campsite lake. Lovely job. But first, coffee o'clock. Winning! Getting back to our digs late the night before, we decided to fish the little lake on the campsite, which supposedly had some very large carp in. With boats being banned, I decided to have a marker around the swim to see what I was dealing with. Early morning at the campsite. Beautiful morning. Beautiful morning, as they have all been. Uh, we got down quite early this morning for sunrise. Uh, got it up in sort of middle of the lake. Uh, and we decided to target right in the middle. 20 wraps. 20 wraps. There's a lot of, um, a lot of match fishermen on this one. A lot of pole fishermen, pleasure fishermen. And they're all fishing in the edges. So we decided to target the middle. I don't think it gets fished a lot. So we put mark it up a little bit, put about found a nice little spot. It's all pretty much the same out there. Whee! Going under your line. Um, yeah, it's all pretty much the same out there. About 12 foot deep. No real features. Pretty smooth. No weed. Uh, yeah, it's been a couple of hours. After five or six bombs out on the spot, the left down rod while I was having a snooze. Away. Here we go, mate. Splash, splash. Well done. Uh, here we go. Little mirror. Uh, 
a lovely way to start the day. I was uh, just having a little snooze on the platform there. After all these early starts, as you can probably hear, my voice is going. Um, and I think that's just, just, just due to a lack of sleep. But nice to get off the mark to start the day. There are some very big ones in here. Uh, but there are also quite a few of these little bad boys. So expect a few more today. But nice little start. Ripping! No, I haven't put it out. It's just on the same spot, isn't it? Lovely! <laughs> Anyone think you've done that before, Jim? <laughs> Right, so here we are, number two, and uh, this one's a little bit bigger as you can see. So if they carry on getting uh, bigger by that increment, I'll be a very happy man. But yeah, lovely to, uh, lovely to be getting them out of the uh, camping lake. Another win, rubber cops on two. Come in for you Alex, you've got some catching up to do now. Aye aye! <laughs> Ah, thank you, baby. Back she goes. Lovely. Yes. <laughs> Hot, isn't it? The sun and the heat had forced us from the platforms by midday. So me and Alex decided to go in search of some shade and hopefully a few more carp. Spotting a gap in the trees behind an island, I had a strong feeling there would be some carp in there escaping the sun. So I decided to try my luck and chuck two rods in the margin. Not even having time to turn my alarms on, I was doing battle with quite possibly the biggest carp I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> we'll have a look at this little beauty. Smallest one of my trips so far. And we were over the other side and it was getting way too hot over there so me and Alex decided to pack up and head round to this side in the shade. Uh, there's a little back channel that runs around one of the islands here. Uh, and I said to Alex, said, that's going to do a fish straight away. It's just so hot out there. It's really shaded, nice little quiet back channel, probably never gets fished. And it was in the water less than 30 seconds. I mean, you'll see from the video how quickly it was, it was away. I didn't even have time to turn the alarm on. Only a tiny one, but I'm very happy with this one because, uh, well, I expected it to go and it did. <laughs> there we are. Cutting the afternoon short, Alex and I decided to treat ourselves to a slap up lunch before heading back to the chalet to have a big sort out. The plan was to head back to the park lake we had started on and try and catch some of the bigger carp that we knew lived there. Another late night of charging batteries and loading media ensued before we were back at the lake in time for sunrise. Deciding to set up at the bottom end of the lake this time, I decided to change my approach for the bigger fish. A short while later I received my first take, and with a little help from local legend Noor, I managed to tame the fish all the way to the bank. Unfortunately, with a few shakes of its head, this one was off. Oh. Mm. Alex just turned up with KFC lad. Great work. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely moved. That's a different wind to yeah. the other day. Yeah, strong wind as yeah. well. You picked the right spot today, I think. Yeah, no, there. definitely. I reckon you're going to have it off for like the next like, five hours. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's a good fish. Oui. Yes, he's in. Right, this is what we've been waiting for. Our big boy, and she's finally come along after a lot of effort and a lot of days in the lake, picking up a few small ones up, up at the other end of the lake, and I finally got one of the A-team. It's not the big, big A-team, but it's certainly up there for me. Absolutely buzzing with this one. Scopex squid, white pop-ups doing the business. Lovely job. Oh. 
The baiting approach had worked, and baiting heavily with a Scopex squid and particle had finally produced one of the bigger fish. With a few more hours left of the day, it was just enough time to squeeze out one more after sadly losing one later that afternoon. Right, there we go. Number two for today, and it's been a bit of a, a bit of a struggle today. I managed to lose two, uh, which I'm not too happy about, obviously. But it's nice to uh, capitalise at the end of the day. Sun's just going down now. Probably got another hour of sunlight left. Just packed up most of the gear, uh, and this one rattled off right hand rod again. It's been the right hand rod four times today. So, yeah, looking forward to tomorrow now. What a lovely way to end the day. We We spent the next few days fishing some of the magical places the Alps has to offer. It's easy to see why this is my favourite place in Europe to roam. You've been losing your way again The whites of your eyes don't seem the same You've been taking it further than anyone The look in your ass says you're nearly gone But how can I leave in case you don't come home? In case you don't come home Picking up a few smaller fish on our travels and dropping back in at the Park Lake, this adventure wasn't the big fish crusade I had hoped for. But making great memories with friends and sharing good times is what it's all about. And anyways, there was always time for part two. So I'll never leave in case you make it out. Well, good morning friends, and you join me here on the morning of the second half of the Crossing Borders. And uh, it's been a bit of a difficult morning this morning, as we got the announcement last night that we were going back on lockdown, and that we had to quarantine if we were going out of the country for 14 days, um, going over to France. But we've made the decision, the van's loaded, we're going anyway, we're going to have a great time. Um, it's been a bit of a tough decision to make, but uh, nevertheless, fishing has prevailed and we shall soldier on. Lovely. Taking the ferry over to France, this time I had my little brother with me for a few weeks on the road. Breaking him in gently, our first few stops were at some commercial venues on behalf of Angling Lines. You got it. With my brother Mackenzie getting straight in on the action, it was a great chance for him to get some much needed experience on European soil. Oh, proper buzzing on this one. With some great fishing and fantastic hospitality from Lake Edge, our next stop was another secluded lake in the forest called Bon Pesh. What's that yellow t-shirt all about? Leave the yellow t-shirt alone. It attracts the car. Oh, it's a, it's a carp he attracts yellow t-shirt. I'm not happy about this yellow t-shirt. Huh? No, I'm still not happy about this yellow t-shirt. Well, you can find me some t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got to buy you carpy t-shirts, yeah. as well as all your carp gear. This is my coat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with this t-shirt. Are you a pro now? Huh? You're a pro now? Yeah, of course. You're a pro, pro fisherman. It's because of the yellow t-shirt. The action was once again quick to follow. Fishing to the shelf on the far margin and baiting lightly with Scopex squid, it was nice, comfortable fishing. Enjoying some easy angling and making the most of the swimming pool was however short-lived. 
and we were soon back on the road in search of the giant carp we had come for. Do you not just like watch your videos and be like, what am I saying? Yeah, lots of times. Do you know how many videos that don't actually make it into the film? <laughs> Big cop. You, baby. Big cop. It's you, baby. Big cop. Diamond rings. I just want scaly big things. <laughs> right, dudes, amigos, and ladies. Um, we are currently on our way. We just left Bompesh and we're heading to Slovenia. We're, uh, we've decided to make the long trip across Europe because lots of uh, countries are going on lockdown at the moment again. Well, they're not going on lockdown, but we're imposing a quarantine back in the UK. Um, so on the back of this global pandemic, we shall soldier on uh, and we shall head out to Slovenia to a monstrous pig filled massive lake. I'm not actually sure if it's that big to be fair, but we're going to a lake with big pigs in it. We're going to catch some big carp. We have a great five days in Slovenia and then we're going to make the 15, 16, 17 hour drive home on Friday afternoon. But before that, we're gonna go fishing. Ain't we? Yeah. Yeah. Fish. Fish. Fun. Fun. Big. Big. Yeah. Ballsy. Carp. Carp! <laughs> Arriving at the lake the following morning, we made light work of setting up in our swim. With temperatures in the mid 30s, it was nice to escape the heat in the base camp. Getting the rods out in the early evening and showing my brother how to wrap up his rods so he was hitting the same spot every time was massively important here. With depths of around 40 feet, we were unclipping the line as soon as the lead hit the surface so the rigs wouldn't swing back on a tight line away from the baited area. Now, that's it, that's what up. Knowing how many big carp were present at this venue, the plan was to bait heavily and consistently all through the night. And we didn't have to wait long for our first piece of action. Oh, I'm awake. Well, mate, <laughs> just putting out some spots, working the swim. Uh, I was told that every half an hour or so at night, a couple of spots out, ring the dinner bell, and literally, if after about five, fifth or six spots, right hand rod absolutely ripped off, didn't it? Didn't it? Didn't it? So we're into our first Slovenian car, but we've got a good one too. Well, I can't keep a rod in the water at the minute. <laughs> That's what we wanted. Just literally about to redo that other rod. And, uh, yeah, she's gone ripping off again, isn't she? Isn't she? Just took the jumper off. Is there grass carp in here? Slow and deep. I don't know if there's grass carp in here actually. But I'm sure we'll find out. Fifty-six pounds. Fifty-six pounds. Yes! Third pounds. fish. <laughs> just double check that. Well, here she is. What an absolute stunning common. Caught on the uh, Scopex squid pop-ups, as always. Yeah, very happy with this one. But the main event is coming next, which is absolutely monstrous. Uh, I was buzzing with this one, but the next one is something very special. <laughs> How's about that for an absolute Slovenian beast? She is a proper monster. I like that word, don't I? Monster. But true to the word, proper beast last night. Number three for me, three or four. Last one I put straight back. And yeah, 
very, very happy with this one. It's been a long time coming, put in a lot of effort. And yeah, the accuracy and the baiting has paid off. And she rolled into the net early hours of this morning. Absolutely buzzing. With the morning events over, it was time to top up the swims and it was clear the heavy baiting approach was working. Using a mix of Scopex squid and hot tuna, it was proving to be a winning formula. Jeez, oh, they said no daytime bites. <laughs> well, my, uh, my supreme baiting approach has appeared to have paid off again, mate. There's a uh, same rod again. They're literally fished about two foot apart. It's that same rod that keeps going, going and going and going. But dare I say it, this actually feels like another good fish. Um. Jeez. Oh my God, my big catfish. <laughs> I've actually chopped up a load of boilies uh, and also used some of the spot cloud. And that's what I've been spotting out over the top. And what that does is puts a, puts a real fine flavor column right the way through the water the water right the way down to the bottom and it draws those fish that are passing through down onto that baited area. Now if you imagine that that water out there is 35 to 40 foot deep where we're fishing and those fish are passing through at 10 foot they're not necessarily going to be able to hone in on those baits on the bottom. But if you've got a food column that's running from 10 foot well from the top of the water all the way down to the bottom at 40 feet those fish are going to follow that scent trail down and lo and behold right at the bottom Good 10 or 15 kilos, big juicy boilies, some lovely tiger nuts, and most importantly, brother cop, big juicy Scopex squid pop up with a size four claw on there. Bark, in she goes. Get in there, son. All the miles on the road and effort to capture these beautiful carp had finally started to pay off. This is what we had come here for, and this was our reward. Heading out on the boat that evening to top up the spots for the night ahead, we celebrated with a lovely bit of brother carp cuisine before the rods went back out for the night ahead. Well, he's into his first Slovenian carp. He was fast to kit. I was still awake after catching my last one. And it went ripping off right hand rod as well, lad. Yes, it did. How's about that, eh? Does it feel good? Easy. Easy. Yeah. Hello, mate. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. The following morning, we were treated to a truly stunning sunrise. It really is my favourite time of day when the birds start to sing and the whole world starts to wake up again. It really is almost impossible to beat. There she is. Only one for me last night. 43 pounds, a very angry common. Um, but another chunk on the bank, so I'm a very happy man. I uh, was expecting a few more runs to be fair. Put out a lot of bait last night. And uh, I've got one, but Mackenzie has got another monster. Proper big boy. So we'll get him out next to show you. And we'll get this little beauty back. Well. My first Slovenian chunk right here. 46 and a half pounds. And oh my God, is he beautiful. And very heavy. Very angry as well. So I'm gonna 
hurry this one up and put him down and say goodbye. <laughs> this was a great moment to share with my little brother and I had finally delivered on my promise of a carp that he would struggle to hold. Watching that one swim away had me reflecting on how lucky we are to have access to such beautiful places across Europe. This lake in Slovenia was another cracking example of the immense fishing that is available to absolutely everyone. Tuesday afternoon, uh, and they said that this is a, a nighttime only venue at the moment. So there were no bites coming out during the day. I had a 49 pounder yesterday about three o'clock. And, uh, and today it's gone ripping off again. It's just uh, about an hour late, it's about half past four. Um, I've been spodding for a good hour and a half and it's probably been half an hour to an hour since I stopped. Um, and I put a fair bit of bait out. So that baiting approach of putting that, that, those food signals down through the water column is obviously paying off. Um, Cause we've got another one on at four o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. He's a very happy man. Yes, he is. He went ripping off and he picked up the rod. He's got one on. Nah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, what an incredible creature. They said they don't come in the day, like I've said before, but I've proved it wrong because this is an absolute unit. 51 pounds on the nose, a massive, massive common on the Scopex squid pop-ups, doing it here in Slovenia. Very happy man, very heavy fish. I think I'll put it down. <laughs> you catch a koi I'm throwing you in. I'm gonna pick you up by the scruff of your neck and the base of your trousers and I'm gonna swing you back and forward three times before launching you in the drink. Finding a large shoal of carp on the opposite side of the lake with the drone, it was clear to see why we could afford to use so much bait here. That evening the carp started to push towards the middle of the lake. Putting on a lovely show for the evening, it was clear to see why, as the lake was starting to get busy leading up to the weekend. With the runs having slowed down for us over the last 24 hours, we decided to leave the following morning and head down to the river. Bites have sort of slowed up the last 24 hours. We had a couple last night. Kenzie lost one again, and uh, I only managed one last night. But the one that did manage is an absolute perler. So we're gonna get her up now. Wow, take a 
look at that beauty and a fine specimen for our final morning here in Slovenia. Well, it's not, not actually our final morning. Tonight we're off to the river in town. We've got a beautiful church to go and fish. But for now, I'm very, very happy with this one. It's been a brilliant few days here on the big lake and I can't wait to come back again. Lovely. Well, it wouldn't be any sort of trip without some form of van shambles. And once again, just got to the river, about to have a look with Frank, uh, and he points at my wheel and says, <laughs> It's like, no, killing me. But the good news is there was a tire shop just around the corner, managed to get the van in straight away. Uh, the guy was only working till 12, and it was quarter to 12 when, the, uh, when we spotted the, 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 the leak on the tire. So we've managed to get it in, he's fixing it now. Wheel's just going back on the van. So hopefully we should be back down the river in about an hour. Um, with the rods out, catching carp. With the van back in action, we got straight back to the river in search of some likely looking areas. That koi is cool. We didn't have to search hard to find the fish, as the bright koi and ghost carp were not particularly hard to find. We didn't set up until later that evening. After a much needed shower and a fresh change of clothes, we were feeling fresh and confident for the night ahead. Prepping the rigs and leaving nothing to chance, we stopped for a quick pizza break before arming the rods with the cultured pop-ups. We had found some clear areas in amongst the weed and pads on the far margin. However, it would take some serious underarm action to get it on the money. Uh, and here we are on our final night in Slovenia. The sun's just disappeared down behind the church here um, and it's been an incredible two weeks out with my brother. Um, the whole journey has been over the last two months. You've seen part one and this is sort of the part two of the part two, if you like. Um, we've been navigating around this global pandemic which has been a proper nightmare. But we've managed to get out there, we've managed to catch some fish and honestly it's been such a great experience. We've caught some really, really lovely big fish um, so hopefully we're going to get one out of this little river tonight. There's some really special koi carp in here uh, and I'm really hoping to see one at some point and show you guys in the morning. But otherwise, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. This is Crossing Borders 2. The search continues. Yes, we man! <laughs> we got one on! Yes, we have. Oh, he is the one. Gee, he's not that? happy. Oh, it feels good to have a car upon again. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah. Can we net him? Can we play the fish? I'll net him. He's in! He's in! He's in! Oh my god, that is a banger, dude! Banger! Well done! And look, look at the church going as well! Yes! Well done mate! Yes! <laughs> 25, just over 25 pound mate! <laughs> yes. It don't matter because that is an absolute <laughs> banger! Yes! Banger! <laughs> look what we have here! I was a bit doubtful after the lake only getting one fish and Jamie getting them all! But I think this just topped off the whole entire trip. Absolutely beautiful fish. And I am absolutely made up for it. And she's very angry, so I'll be quick and I'll put her back down. Yes. Yes. Victory dance. <laughs> the night was long and restless, but not without a vent. We watched the stars roll over the church and I couldn't help but wonder if this was the Vatican of carp fishing. With morning breaking, we sat quietly under a blanket of cloud, hoping the sun would break through in time for our departure. We had limited time to spare as our journey home was a very long and tiring one but some things are just worth waiting for.
Well, here we go. What a send off. Last morning here in Slovenia, and me and my bro have finished it off in style. We've had a great two weeks, had some lovely times, and some beautiful carp. 38 pounds from the river, center of town. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to do it all over again. Yes, bro. Sick. <laughs>